Yeah, as you can see, I sure can pick some nice restoration projects. This may look like the average tabletop 78 RPM record player from the 1940s, but it's a little more advanced than that, which I'll explain in a minute. This is a General Electric 78 RPM phonograph from around 46, 47, somewhere around there. And here's what makes this model so special. Uh, most 78 RPM record players from the 30s and 40s used what was known as a crystal pickup cartridge. These cartridges tracked very heavy and were relatively low fidelity, but they were cheap and plentiful, so that's why manufacturers used them. You know, right after World War II, the high fidelity craze started to take off and manufacturers and record companies and just listeners in general became more interested in better fidelity recordings. So GE introduced what they called the variable reluctance pickup cartridge which basically is just a magnetic pickup cartridge. It's the forerunner of magnetic cartridges that are used in modern day turntables. And here is an example of what this pickup cartridge looks like. This is the first generation VR cartridge. The first generation cartridges were 78 RPM only and used a non-replaceable stylus, which is one of those uh, what were they thinking moments. Well, I think they realized that after a, a year or two. And the second generation used a replaceable stylus. And then when the micro, micro groove LP records and 45 RPM records came out in the late 40s, 48, 49, they modified the cartridge to use a dual sided stylus, one size for the micro groove records and one size stylus for the 78 RPM records. And they had a little red push down knob on top of the tone arm to select the type of stylus you needed. But like I said, this is a 78 RPM model. This uses the first generation cartridge. I don't know how I'm going to go about replacing this stylus tip. I may just have to send the cartridge off and have it rebuilt. But this thing is in rather poor condition. As you can see, the grill cloth is shot. The speaker cone is shot. Looks to be about an 8 inch speaker and I should should have a speaker here in my junk stash and we've got controls for all phone power and tone and the tone arm has a built-in motor switch to start and stop the platter now this lid is coming apart and will have to be tended to but that's what they make wood glue and clamps for and here is the emblem that's that could be found in the lid of all GE record players and radio phono combos that contain the new variable reluctance magnetic cartridge. If you see this if you see this emblem in the inside lid of a GE record player, you know it uses the the new type cartridge. And here's the side of the cabinet showing a good bit of veneer damage which can be fixed, but I'm going to have to have to learn some things about cabinet work. I've gotten pretty good at repairing the electronic end of these items over the past 20 something years, but I really never have tackled cabinet work that much, and seeing as how it's hard to find anybody locally that does that kind of thing, well I guess I need to learn. Okay, now let's look at the amplifier in this unit. And here's the amplifier. This is a Model 12, by the way, it uses a four tube amp that has a power transformer. Chassis is rather nice size, so it uh, a rather nice size, so it should be easy to work on. We've got a 5Y3 rectifier tube, a 6V6 output tube, which should be good for oh, probably somewhere between 3 to 5 watts, which is not bad for a table model record player. 
and then a couple of preamp tubes with the whole crystal cartridges most of those had an output that ranged anywhere between a volt and three volts well these new magnetic cartridges have a much lower output I think around I'll have to look and see but I'm thinking around 50 to 70 maybe a hundred millivolts not not any more than that so because those cartridges are such low output the amplifier has to have a preamp stage built in in order to amplify the low output of the cartridge to be usable okay let's pull this amp out and have a look at it we might actually start working on this today here's the amp out of a record player this is our 5Y3 rectifier tube this is our 6SC7 which is the magnetic phono preamp stage and then it sends a signal over here to the 6SQ7 which is the driver stage and then our amplified signal comes out of here to this 6V6 power output tube which is amplified to a sufficient level to drive the loudspeaker and these are two electrolytic filter capacitors which will have to be changed and this is the power transformer and here's the underside of the chassis as you can see it's nice and spacious it shouldn't be too big of a problem to overhaul this and you can see all the wax paper capacitors here that need to be replaced and there's a big old mica mold cap there which is actually a I believe a big paper capacitor it it looks like a mica cap but I think it's actually paper and those are usually bad too and there's the audio output transformer so yeah I, I think even though this has some cabinet issues it's it's worth restoring because you know, let's face it most portable record players from that time period used a little dinky two-tube power transformerless hot chassis amp with a crystal cartridge in it this one uses a magnetic cartridge and a decent sized amplifier for a table model set so let's get started on this amplifier I don't I don't think it'll take long at all to to bring it back to life and the next thing we want to do is check our power transformer to make sure it's not toast and in order to do that I've removed the rectifier tube to keep any D, uh, B plus voltage from coming up I want to check the AC output of all of the transformer windings and if those voltages look okay and if nothing smokes or burns we, we should be in good shape so we're plugged into our AC power supply and I'm connected between one side of the high voltage winding and ground looking at roughly 320 volts there that's good now we'll move over to the other side of the high voltage winding that's good now we'll check the filament voltage I'm going to be looking for roughly 5 volts at the rectifier tube filament and that's good 5.9 volts that's about right under a no load condition now let's check for 6.3 volts on the other windings on the other filament winding and we have 7.3 volts on the filament winding which is about right under a no load condition so I'll let this sit here and cook a while and if it doesn't smoke or catch on fire we will proceed with the restoration okay we've been running for several minutes with no odors crackles pops smoke or anything like that so as far as I'm concerned this transformer is in good shape now now we need to get on with the capacitors okay moving on with the paper capacitor replacement I've already replaced three of them and I'd like to bring up a couple of points normally when I replace a capacitor I like to solder the new part directly to the terminal lug in which the old part was removed from but sometimes that's not always possible because the newer capacitors often don't have long enough leads to do that 
So like in this case, I had to bridge a piece of wire there in order to make the connection. Another point I'll mention is this capacitor right here that was originally in the plate circuit of the audio output tube and its value was rated at .001 microfarad at 1200 volts. Now for one thing I don't have any 1200 volt caps in stock with that value. All I have are 630 volt capacitors and one may ask why would they put a 1200 volt cap in a circuit that only has maybe 300 volts DC on it? Well, the reason being is is because there's audio riding on the plate connection of this audio output tube and the peaks, the actual audio peaks might exceed the voltage rating of a normal 600 volt capacitor so that's probably why they used a 1200 volt cap. But since I didn't have a 1200 volt cap, I had to cheat. Like I said, the original value was 0 0.001 microfarad at 1200 volts. So I just took two 0 0.002 microfarad, 630 volts, and wired them in series, as you can see here. And that gives us a point. 001 microfarad 1200 volt capacitor and here's this old mica mold paper capacitor that couples the input or should I say couples the phono cartridge to the input of the preamp stage its colors are green, black, orange green being 5, black being 0 and orange being the multiplier color, which would be 10,000, which would make this a 0 0.05 microfarad capacitor. And my test revealed that this capacitor so far is the most leaky that I've found. I believe I said earlier that these weren't very reliable. So now I will continue on here. Okay, all nine paper capacitors have been replaced. Now all we have to do is tackle the electrolytic capacitors and, and then this amplifier should be in good enough shape to give it a test run. We now have all paper and electrolytic capacitors replaced and I left the original electrolytic can capacitors physically mounted to the chassis but they are electrically disconnected from the circuit and now we're about ready to run a test on this thing. And it appears to be working fairly well. Okay, we'll end this video for now because we have passed the basic functional test. In the next video, we'll run some more tests to get this thing working the best it possibly can. And then we'll check it out with a turntable. Okay, thanks for watching and more to come later.